is the pain in London government is up to the level of poverty pain. The lowest pain in London government is now on 28 pence an hour above the minimum wage. But people in Portsmouth aren't only blessed to have the Tory government that doesn't want to pay them this money, we've also got a local authority in the that doesn't want to pay them this money. Back in 2014, the Joint Trade Union support a local campaign to restore living wage for the City Council. That campaign was successful and all workers were paid the Joseph Browntree Foundation living wage. Twelve months later, the Tory Minister for Civil Administration reneged on that agreement and have frozen the lowest paid workers in the Council, frozen their wages until the minimum wage catches up with them. That's what we're dealing with the course then. This campaign's vital, and I think we can achieve three things. A decent pay rise for local government workers. It will bring down this government, and more we're only, we can bring down the Tory administration in Thank you. Sean Hoyle, who is the national president of the RMT Union. We are then going to have a march. And then we're going to have some more speakers. And I'm hoping that Rob from the Fire Brigade Union is here. Rob here? Rob, excellent. So we've got a firefighter from Portsmouth speaking when we come back. We will also have speakers uh, from Momentum in Portsmouth who campaign so hard to get Labour elected. We will also have speakers from the Labour League. And we also have some speakers from other trade unions who are here. So we want to break up the rally and not have all the speakers in one go. So we're going to have uh, Sean to speak for our last speaker now. Then we're going to form up with a minute to get the rest of the march. Can I just say, there are placards down in the front of the stalls here. There are banners and things like that. If people want to get the, the point of the march is, we're going to march through Commercial Road on a Saturday morning to make it clear to people out there and let them know how concerned we are about our pay and why we're concerned about the impact on our public services. And it's not just a, a march for the sake of a march, it's about publicising the campaign and getting the people and getting people behind us. Before we hear from the RMC, I just want to say one thing. There's one public sector that's working. We can't keep them here, but they are here. They're over there in their room with the police. And it's really important that as we're standing up for public sector, we also stand up for the police. Thank you, and uh, thank you, comrades. Always a pleasure, as I say, to be in my hometown. Means I do get to see my family for a change. And uh, as my wife Donna works in uh, the council here, she made sure I came along. Because, no, uh, not that Donna. Please. I've got to do that. That's so not funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do believe had you on email by accident. But, um, no, seriously, it is a privilege to be here. And my union, we do, uh, we do have public, uh, public sector workers in the RFA, Nexus, uh, Rail, and others. So I am speaking uh, as the president of a, of a union, but we do uh, have members in this sector. But it's important, we, we had the People's Assembly March the other week. And uh, what made that made me think was there has been a change. For years I've marched, I've picketed, I've, I've done, I mean, I know the TUC and I know we've got a good comrade here from the TUC, but frankly, years and years of waiting for another strongly worded letter from the TUC doesn't really do it for me. I believe in direct action. I believe in direct action. I believe in action that actually gets people focused on the problem and trying to change the future. I want to make a point now. In Portsmouth, we, we've always been a bit soft. Not that people stood here, but electorally we've always been a bit, bit soft. I mean, it's a privilege for me to stand here with the first Labour MP in Portsmouth South. Absolutely. And under Jeremy Corbyn, I work with being reinvigorated again to the point where my union, the RMT, the, in the former guys, was the union that moved the resolution that formed and started what became the Labour Party. So we were the, the, the grandfather of the Labour Party. And we're not in it anymore. But we are talking about coming back and we would be interested in coming back to a Jeremy Corbyn led socialist Labour Party. <laughs> All around us, look over there, the Isle of Wight. Who have you got there? 
Rob Seeley, what, what did he vote for the other day? He voted to continue the pay cap. Then you go that way. You've got Caroline Garnier. And what did she do the other day? Voted for the pay cap. Alan Mack, haven't. Voted for the pay cap. And Penny Moran, Portland, voted for the pay cap. We are surrounded by these scumbags. They are scumbags. I don't mind saying it. That's what I think. I'm allowed an opinion and that is my opinion. And I'll tell you now. It's no good just marching, we must march, we must protest, but we must remove these people. They are not there for us, they are not our kind. The Tory party are a party that hates the working class. It's in their DNA. And until we remove them, all we're ever going to get is Trump. All we're ever going to get is Trump. And I'm not going to say the rest of that speech for Trump as I've been gone. I did make some statements about telling trees to make a bit rude. But um, as Graham always mentioned briefly, I do want to touch on that because the austerity and the strike, it isn't even a pay cap. Your pay cap isn't a cap, it's a pay cut. Let's call it what it is. Against inflation year on year, a pay cut, seven years. Only a, not even two years ago, the MPs had a 10% pay rise. MPs, sorry about this, but you are. You're 76,000 plus a year. Now, it is just wrong. How can nurses? I mean, the full country doesn't. They're the real workers out there. They're the ones saving lives. They're the ones our community looks up to. And at the moment, they're dying on their feet. 25% of new teachers are quitting because they cannot afford to do the job that they love. They can't do the job that they love and bring up a family and feed them. The story of nurses, teachers, etc. going to food banks, it's a disgusting story in the fifth richest country in the world. And we say that it's a budget problem. I've never heard a general yet say we can't drop that bomb on Syria. My budget won't allow me to. I never hear that. So I'll leave you this. It's a privilege to be in my hometown. I will march with you in a minute. And I'll march with you again and again and again. But until, until working class people in this country realise that the people that they're putting in power are no friend of theirs, nothing will change. And that includes the TUC getting off their knees, whether we, whether we call it a general strike, we had moved the motion two years ago at the TUC to call for a generalised strike, whereby every union that has issues coordinate the dates. They're all legal strikes, we all get together and sort the dates out. We have to do something more. Too many people are blind. Too many people. I saw a caption for two foxes and it said one to the other. Did you hear about Theresa May? Bring back fox hunting. And the other one went, well, I'm still voting Tory. And that got her up again. So I'll leave you with this. Because the thing on everyone's mind at the moment is Grenfell. And I was at a meeting the other day in Port Callis House where a teacher, one of their campaigners, explained to me about the cladding at the bottom of the tower was the fireproof cladding, but the order got cancelled, they had zinc cladding ordered, but for £300,000 cheaper they could have aluminium, which wasn't fireproof, so they changed the order and they put that on the building, directly because of austerity, directly because of a cut from central government. So I'll leave you with this, Theresa May is the head of the central government. When you made that cut, that as a direct result was death. I leave you with this. In my opinion, Theresa May, you and your government are murderers. So Up the women! Hi girls! Um, we're under the NHS petition. We continue to campaign against uh, the cuts to the NHS, the creeping privatisation. What we're seeing now is the doctors charging £450 for a 20 minute uh, appointment. Um, we've still got to petition uh, to save our NHS. Jeremy Corbyn will bring it back into public ownership. Another thing, for all the women out there, 90% of us are paid out of our back pockets for austerity cuts. And we're also paid by contributing voluntary in the volunteer sector, carers, billions of pounds to this economy. So I say, sisters, unite! Yeah. 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 Yeah.
begin here to drag on her car. Keep that pump hand going. Uh, it's Tories, cut, cut, cut. It makes no economic sense whatsoever. They bring us to a knees till we can't work. And, and, and so it affects the economy long term. Their long term economic plan didn't work. And although I absolutely agree with what's been said about strike action, we are moving towards mass coordinated strike action if we're serious about fighting the public sector pay freeze. And I will be arguing that as the member of the service group executive of, uh, of my union, Unison. But we also need to keep mobilising as people have said, because that's part of the way we build sufficient uh, head of steam and sufficient, sufficient momentum to win our strike balance. The next big focus probably is going to be on Sunday the 1st of October in Manchester where the Tory party are having their conference and I know there's many people in Manchester who are absolutely fearing that the Tories come to a, you know, one of the biggest working class cities in the country and imposing their, their wealth and their, uh, their, their disgusting policies there. So there will be a big demonstration on Sunday the 1st of October in Manchester. I know my Unison branch is always pretty hot on the transport. We've already booked a coach. He's leaving at 6.30 in the morning from the hard. Mark down there has got a sign-up sheet. The coach itself is going to cost about £1,200, so we're asking for people to pay £20 with their wage and £5 if they're unwaged. If you want to book your seats, book as soon as possible, because we, I think we'd like to need more and more transport, because I think more and more people will want to demonstrate against the Tories in Manchester. I'm going to suggest that maybe after this rally we go to the pub and talk a bit more about how we build for that. Uh, but see Mark there, get your name on the list, book up, you don't need to pay your money today, but we need to know who's coming so we can start building a, 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 a organising transport. So, what we need to do now, we're going to go on our march, we need to get every, all the banners, all the placards, there are still some placards I can see down underneath the unison table there, if people want to grab some, ones that say no more cut, no more pay cut, scrap the pay cut, there's, there's there's placards here, there's banners over there. If we can all get together, I want to take a photograph of us all together as well from up here. So if we can come over here, we'll have stewards so we'll three on the other side and we'll get ready to march. So if we can gather over here, bring your banners over, we'll get ready to march. So we can get the, uh, the unison banner off the table and so we can take that as well. Uh, three. Can I have a okay. I thought they were, I thought they were the same. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think we have to take a photo. <laughs> <laughs> have you found a Oh, my friend Ted? Oh, yeah. Do we want?
and make them pay. No pay, no Sector, 
reward those that selflessly devote their careers to help others. Those that really do work for the people. This government and its figurehead, Theresa May, are on the ropes. The alternative has momentum and we must build on this momentum to ensure change. We can see that change right here today before us, in the face of the newly elected MP, Stephen Morgan, wherever he's gone. <laughs> that change must inspire us, it must motivate us, we must keep going. We need to stand together, we need to rally together, write together and lobby together, until this government relents and releases our beloved police, teachers, nurses, firefighters and all the other public sector workers from an unnecessary and long-suffered pay cap. Furthermore, we must keep going, keep up the pressure, fighting until we make sure this government serves the many and not the few. Thanks for listening guys and keep up the fight. that we're seeing a, a transformation, particularly down here in Portsmouth. I'm very pleased we've got three speakers coming up and being part of that transformation in terms of getting Labour elected in Portsmouth South and part of the overall drive for Corbyn and socialist policy. So our first of all, we're going to have Ramal Khan, who's going to speak, who is the candidate for Portsmouth North. Here for Ramal. Thank you, John. It's really great to be here today. I see so many people. I, as you know, I was the unknown before, I'm still the unknown. And I think it's not about me or anyone, it's all of us. Some of the campaigns when I fought throughout the last eight weeks, we've seen nurses, we've seen doctors, I've seen people who are doctors saying doctors falling ill need doctors. And this government says we need austerity. Well, it's definitely not working. And you're the proof of that today. You know, we represent all aims of people. When I spoke today and when I was campaigning, during the last eight weeks, someone said to me, what do you look like? I said, it's like a PhD in people. Yeah. So the biggest thing of all is, we've got to keep campaigning. And we know, I've always maintained, that we are fighting the 90-10 rule. And the 90-10 rule is 10% of people are filthy rich all over the world. And now we are fighting the 95 rule. 5% of people are filthy rich and have no clue about what it's like in working life. We must, our aim, I've been reselected again from the local council to stand for Nelson and we have other councillors standing for Labour. We are going to fight this from beginning to the end. We are not people who read by the script. We believe passionately in like you do today and you are living proof of that today. But we are fighting many, many sectors, NHS, police, fire services. It's very good for the local councillors and national MPs to make big, big speeches about how to fight terrorism, how to fight you know, uh, firefighting, how to do this. But what we, they don't say is they're cutting 10,000 police officers on their budget. They're cutting fire services, they're cutting teachers. And I remember the days when teachers didn't have to pay money out of their pocket to teach the students. So we need to change many, many things here. So I, I, I'd like to thank you for listening to me today. And it's passionate. I, I know the rain has stopped, stopped all of us. Lots of feelings for people. I'd like to thank John and everyone else here and fight this moment because we need to be protesting as well as John said, making our voices heard. Not saying what people want to hear us say, but really believing in our cause. So thank you very much for hearing. Thank you.